So this is the back of the orchestrator model 140. I wanted to point out the console ports. So on this particular model, there is a serial port that you use initially to configure the ethernet port so you can manage via the web user interface. So I plug the serial cable in next. Above that port is a management port for managing the orchestrator itself. So I'm gonna plug a ethernet cable in there. I'll use the serial cable first to do the initial setup of the management ethernet port. And then I'll use the management ethernet port for subsequent configuration of the orchestrator. Now, if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed that when I inserted the pink ethernet cable into the appliance management port on the back, I actually plugged it into management too, by mistake. Uh, I've plugged it into the correct port management one, the one that I intend to configure via the serial console. Now I've turned the orchestrator around and I'm plugging in two security gateway modules, two checkpoint firewalls. I'm attaching them to the orchestrator. Again, this is a model 140 to ports 27 and 28, which are the first two ports that are configured out of the box as downlink ports. Plug your security gateway modules into downlink ports. And you want to see link lights appear. And they are slowly, there we have link for both appliances, on both appliances and on the orchestrator. So I just want to reiterate the default port allocation of the Model 140. Uh, ports 27 and 28 begin the default downlink ports. And again, that's what you would plug your security gateway modules into. The downlink ports extend from there all the way to the right. We have four, two on the top, two on the bottom management ports. The rest of the SFP ports are uplink and all of the quad FSP ports are uplink as well. So at this point, I've got the serial cable plugged into the serial console. I've opened up a serial terminal emulator. The first thing I'm going to do is configure the number of orchestrator appliances that will be used in this deployment. The default is two. I only have one for this presentation, and so I'll get an error if I don't change the number of orchestrator units to one. And that's a restart of the orchestrator unit, so it double checks to make sure this is indeed what you want to do. It doesn't take that long for the change to be made, but it, it does cause a brief interruption. Next, I'm going to configure the management Ethernet interface with an IP address and subnet mask. And I'll also ensure that it's set to on, though it should be already. And I'll set a static route that allows me to access this orchestrator over the network from a different subnet. So once I've done that, I can use the web user interface and complete my initial configuration of this orchestrator. Now, save config, just a, a habit, but probably a good idea. So we've looked at the actual physical orchestrator appliance, at least the uh, Model 140 orchestrator appliance. I just wanted to spend a little bit more time explaining the port mappings. So shown here is the, the 140 again. And in the back of the appliance are the management ports for managing the orchestrator appliance itself. That includes one RJ45 serial jack and two RJ45 ethernet jacks. So you would typically plug into the serial port, do the configuration of the first management port, and then use the web user interface to communicate with the orchestrator over that management ethernet port.
on the, the front of the Model 140 appliance, there are, again, a series of small form factor pluggable ports and at the very right, another series of quad small form factor pluggable. And there is a mapping of the interfaces that you can change, but as shipped, the first four SFP interfaces, one, two, three, four, are assigned the role of being management interfaces for the security groups that you create. And you can have multiple security groups sharing the same management interface. Then we have uplink ports, which again are used to connect your site's networks into the orchestrator so traffic can move through the orchestrator and security policy can be applied to it. So note that the uplink ports extend beyond the second grouping of six ports and include the first two of the third grouping of six network ports. So the downlink ports begin at the next port over, and, and that's a trap. It's very easy to assume that the, the, the first two ports, top and bottom, of the third grouping of six start the downlink ports, but that's not the case. You need to, to go one to the right. That's where the downlink ports start. And you can, of course, reassign the ports to different roles you could make the uh, what are currently uplink ports, downlink ports, but that's not the default. And then the very last of the small form factor ports is by default used for synchronization to a second orchestrator appliance in your deployment. So the two orchestrator appliances can act in active active mode. They're both processing traffic, but in addition, high availability. One can take over if the other fails, assuming that you have everything cabled into both. And then the eight quad small form factor ports on the very right are by default assigned as uplink and these ports you can use a four-way splitter if you do so then you get four distinct ethernet ports and each one can be assigned different roles with the orchestrator and finally on the right we have eight quad small form factor ports which you can use a four-way splitter in those ports to get four independent network ports that show up as four Ethernet ports instead of one. Now the Model 170 is similar, except that on the 170, all of the ports are on the front. So way over on the right, we have one RJ45 serial console port and one RJ45 Ethernet console port for managing the orchestrator itself. Then we have, from left to right, a series of quad small form factor ports. And the first two, top and bottom, are by default used for managing your security groups. Then we have ports 3 through 16, which by default are assigned to be uplink interfaces. And then 17 through 31 are assigned to be downlink, except for actually 31, if you're in a, a dual orchestrator deployment, would be synchronization to the other orchestrator appliance. And again, all of these ports can be split with a four-way splitter, giving you four physical distinct Ethernet ports through the splitter. I also want to quickly cover the, uh, the downlink between the orchestrator and a security gateway module. 
the downlink is split into numerous VLANs. For instance, there's a VLAN for each uplink port. Uh, the traffic from that uplink port or to that uplink port will be sent over a specific VLAN, which is, it starts at 1023 plus the port number on the orchestrator. Then the correction layer, which we'll discuss in a bit. Correction layer deals with uh, matted traffic. The correction layer is a separate VLAN. Synchronization between the security gateway modules in the security group is done over a separate VLAN. And finally, the, the chassis internal network or CIN VLAN is used for connectivity between the orchestrators and the security gateway modules. So how important are these uh, VLANs? Very important and uh, probably worth remembering the numbering of the VLANs, uh, 1023 plus the port number, correction layer, uh, 3700 plus the security gateway modules number. Uh, the VLAN, V800 plus the security gateway module and the chassis internal network 3900 plus the security gateway number and uh, IP addresses. So for instance, sync, uh, it uses 192.0.2 network. The uh, chassis internal network uses 198.51.100 network. Uh, one zero a number of security gateway, so uh, the third octet varies as well.